Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Winnipeg, Manitoba. She offers it in memory of her parents, Stefan and Catherine. By choosing to remember your parents, Stefan and Catherine, in this way you are joined by thousands across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Charles Luanga and his companions. They were the people, catechists and teachers of the faith who decided to stand against King Muanga who had an awful sexual predation. And uh, he got so angry with them that he martyred most of them. In fact, he martyred 10,000 in all to cover his tracks. So as we are celebrate this Eucharist, we ask St. Charles Luanga to pray for us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who made the blood of the martyrs, the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood of St. Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield an abundant harvest. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. Tobit, who was blind and ridiculed by his neighbors, even by his wife, wept with much grief and anguish of the heart and began to pray, saying, You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You judge the world. And now, O Lord, remember me and look favorably upon me. Do not punish me for my sins and for my unwitting offenses and those that my ancestors committed before you. They sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments. So you gave, gave us over to plunder, exile, and death to become the talk, the byword, and an object of reproach among all the nations among whom you have dispersed us. And now your many judgments are true in exacting penalty for me for my sins. For we have not kept your commandments and have not walked in accordance with truth before you. So now deal with me as you will. Command my spirit to be taken from me so that I may be released from the face of the earth and become dust. For it is better for me to die than to live. On the same day at Ecbatana in Medea, it also happened that Sarah, the daughter of Regwell, was reproached by one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands and the wicked demon Asmodeus had killed each of them before they had been with her, as is customary for wives. So the maid said to her, you are the one who kills your husbands. See, you have already been married to seven husbands and have not borne the name of a single one of them. Why do you beat us? Because your husbands are dead? Go with them. May we never see a son or daughter of yours. On that day, she was grieved in spirit and wept. When she had gone up to her father's upper room, with hands outstretched toward the window, she prayed and said, Blessed are you, merciful God. Blessed is your name forever. 
Let all your works praise you forever. And now, Lord, I turn my face to you and raise my eyes toward you. Command that I be released from the earth and not listen to such reproaches anymore. I am my father's only child. He has no other child to be his heir, and he has no close relative or other kindred for whom I should keep myself as wife. Already seven husbands of mine have died. Why should I still live? But if it is not pleasing to you, O Lord, to take my life, hear me in my disgrace. At that very moment, the prayers of both of them were heard in the glorious presence of God. So the angel Raphael was sent to heal both of them, Tobit, by removing the white films from his eyes so that he might see God's light with his eyes, and Sarah, daughter of Reguel, by giving her in marriage to Tobias, son of Tobit, and by setting her free from the wicked demon. The word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let mine enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed to a wantonly treacherous. us. Do Teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will not die forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and asked him a question, saying, 
teacher Moses wrote for us that if a man dies leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers, the first married, and when he died, left no children. The second married her and died, leaving no children. And the third, likewise, none of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Is it not this reason you are wrong, that you know neither the Scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. He is the God not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> 750 years ago, in this month of June, Dante Alighieri, the famous Italian poet, was born. He was exiled from his city, and he wrote the famous divine comedy, the story of hell, of purgatory, and of heaven. He starts off with il infermo, hell, and he describes the circles of hell. And he describes hell as the unmaking of the soul, the unmaking of one's very soul. As we listen to the first reading, the story of Tobit and Sarah, it seems to be the unmaking of their very soul. They seem to be going through very hell itself because Tobit will pray, command that my spirit be taken away from me. Sarah will pray, command that my, I should be released from this life. It is better that I should die and not live. Last week I attended the wake of Alice Alamau, who's the mother of Rhea and Audrey and two seminarians, Ryan and Faven. And as I was sitting at the back of the church, her two granddaughters who are in kindergarten were drawing pictures to keep away from the crowd. And they looked up to at me, they recognized me and said, you know, Father, my grandmother is dead. Her eyes are closed, but when she goes up into the clouds, her eyes will be open. And then they said the next question, which absolutely floored me. He says, Father, how many times have you died? I said to myself, it was for an adult I could explain something, but how do you explain to a kindergarten child how many times have you died? And then I realized the stresses that we go through are the very unmaking of our souls, the needs of our children, the care for an aging parent when you are the only child and you've got a family of your own and your own children, when there's marriage breakup, when there's unemployment, when there is earthly disasters as floods and tornadoes and tsunamis, when you live in a country where there is war and disaster. Don't you die so many times? The stresses in life are common to everybody. We all have burdens in life. Some of us think that some people don't have burdens. They're born in nice families, they have good jobs, they have plenty of money. All of us have burdens. And I often tell people, if you don't have a burden, come to me and I'll share some of mine with you. It's a question of how we bear these burdens. We can bear it with bitterness, with anger, with jealousy. Or we can take the burdens and say, this is the part and parcel of our everyday life. And therefore, by my complaining and my whining, I'm not going to get rid of them. But I can face them with peace and tranquility. And as a Christian, I can raise it to a higher notch. I can raise it to the very sufferings of Jesus Christ and unite them with his inestimable or invaluable suffering. Our vocation as Christians is to bear the cross, is to be risen from the dead. 
And very often we limit it to keeping the rules and regulations which are very good in themselves. But what is the spirit in which we keep these rules and regulations? If it is with bitterness and with anger, with jealousy, it has very little value or very little effect. Jesus went through the same thing, but he gave us an example. Jesus was victimized, but never a victim, because he did it out of obedience to the Father, out of love for the Father and each one of us. And when Pilate says, I can do with you anything, he said, no, no, you can't do. I lay down my life when I want to. I choose to do these things. And therefore, we have to look at the burdens that we have in life. Do we do it freely with joy and with happiness? It doesn't take away the pain. It doesn't take away the stress. But it gives us a new enthusiasm in bearing them and going forward. Another thing is, how do we bear our burdens? Do we have a price tag on it? If we do, then when we are called to go to heaven, we will be standing outside where everybody will be sitting at the table inside. We'll be looking through glass doors. And we'll see them celebrating and dancing and music. And we will be outside and left there. The choice is yours and the choice is mine. We can open the door and be joyful and be glad. God bless you all. <coughs> Let us now pray together. <coughs> We pray for our church, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the leaders within our church as they give us an example of how to bear the cross of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For our civil leaders as they speak, for those who bear the cross on an everyday life, for whom everyday life is a burden, a stress, but with joy and with peace, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Stefan and Catherine, the parents of our sponsor today, and for those who have died during the night, for those undergoing surgery today, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for an increase of vocations to priestly and religious life. And during this month of June and July, as couples get married, we ask the Lord to bless them as they keep their marriage vows. We pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed God, Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted your blessed martyrs, Charles Luanga and companions, the grace to die rather than to sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, with, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Charles Luanga and their companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, we sing. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, rem remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember Stefan and Catherine, whom have, you have, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Charles, Luanga, and companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us share with one another a sign of the peace and friendship. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Amen. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of Cardinal Newman. May he support us all the day long, till the shades lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, in his mercy, may he give us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs, St. Charles, Luanga, and companions. May what has helped them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials steadfast in faith and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Morning, our song shall rise.